Welcome to Running the Table, the podcast where we run through everything on the table in the world of college basketball. God, that sounds really weird to say, but we're back with more college basketball recaps, and we got an awesome one tonight. Butler and Creighton. Butler going into Omaha and knocking off the Blue Jays. Super excited to break this one down. So without further ado, let's run it. So you look at a 99 to 98 score and you wonder what the heck happened. And let me tell you right now, this was not a normal game. From the jump, both offenses were going, they were lights out, and they were shooting the heck out of the ball. This seemed like a first to 100 type game. Both teams were scoring and scoring often at all levels. There was absolutely no defense, no defense involved. But Creighton's defense is no slouch. That makes this all the more impressive for Butler to darn near put up triple digits. And if you look at the final score, this is the first Big East game since 2018 where both teams have scored 95 plus and both teams have shot 54.5% from the field. That is really, really, really good. And this was a heavyweight fight from start to finish. When one team pulled ahead or went on a run, the other team answered right back. See the end of the first half where Creighton seemed like they were going to pull away. They had a 10-point lead at one point, And then, boom, Finley Bizjak drills a three right at the buzzer from what seems like the logo. And suddenly Butler's down four and they're back in it. But what was really, really the kicker and what made this game so much more exciting and put it over the top was the final 11 seconds. That sequence was absolutely insane. So bear with me here. A lot happened, but I'm just going to run through what happened in that sequence. So with 10 seconds left, Butler's up three. They foul. Ryan Kalkbrenner goes to the line and sinks both. So it's Butler's ball on the baseline. They inbound it, and DJ Davis dribbles the ball off his knee on the inbound, and the ball goes to Creighton. So now Creighton has the ball on their baseline under their own basket. Inbound goes to Trey Alexander, and he dribbles the ball off the foot. So that's another turnover. The ball goes back to Butler. So the ball goes back into DJ Davis on the inbound. And so Creighton goes to foul, and Ryan Kalkbrenner slashes DJ Davis across the left eye. It is a clear cut. He's bleeding. He can't see. The eye is closed, so he has to leave the game. So who, who goes in but Bowden Kapke, the true freshman, shoots in his place and ices both. It's a three-point game, 99-96. to 96. So now Butler is up three again, and so they foul again. Send Trey Alexander to the line, and he drills both. You think Butler's in the clear with an opportunity to inbound? No, they're not. They have the ball on the baseline, and Landon Moore gives the ball away, and Creighton wins the jump ball. So now with half a second to go, Creighton has a chance to inbound, down one, and win the game. They inbound at the ball's bat around. Butler wins. Everybody in Indianapolis goes freaking nuts so that game was huge for so many reasons and there are aspects from both teams that i'm going to break down starting with butler the winning team my butler bulldogs let's talk about the top performers right quick jamil telford was awesome he stepped up in a big way with 26 points he was 12 of 17 from the field and went two for three from from three point range it seemed like he could do pretty much whatever he wanted. Three, got it. Mid-range, got it. Floater, got it. Go to the basket, drive the lane, got it. It didn't matter. DJ Davis was also key. He took over that point guard role because we didn't have Posh Alexander. More on that later. And in the second half, he caught fire, went on an absolute heater. He had 22 points, 8 of 12 from the field, 3 of 5 from 3, and perfect from the line with three free throws. Also contributed five assists. Some of his shots that he put up, it was just kind of like a how-did-it-go-in kind of a moment. He'd dribble, make contact at the three, just up, put it in, didn't matter. But honestly, what we really got to do Shout out the freshman, man. Finley Bizjack and Bowden Kapke coming up big off the bench when Butler really needed it. Finley Bizjack had 11 points, was three for three from beyond the arc. And we talk about the heroics of Bowden Kapke with eight points coming up big in the biggest moments. Finley Bizjack's shots are finally falling, which is so awesome for him. He's a fantastic shooter. Even though the numbers might not say he is right now, it's finally turning around for him. Bowden Kapke off the pick and pop when he wasn't nailing those clutch free throws was absolutely deadly. You get him at the top of the key, space out, bang out from three. 
So those guys were absolutely awesome. And it was even more impressive because they were playing without Posh Alexander, their star point guard. He was out with a foot injury, and that really hurt Butler defensively more than offensively because he, they were, he was going to be key in stopping Creighton's triumvirate of guards who were absolutely awesome tonight. More on them later. But the guys that came in for him stepped up huge. Mainly because whatever Butler shot from the field seemed like it went in, especially from three where they were on fire. They were 13 for 22 as a team, which is an absurd 59% from three. That is crazy. That just doesn't happen. Jamil Telford, DJ Davis, Pierre Brooks, Bowden Capkin, Finley, Bizjack all cashed in with multiple threes. It doesn't really make much sense, but when you're hot, you're hot. And sometimes you're hot as an entire team. Thad Mata went deep into the bench, even being shorthanded. They also got themselves into foul trouble pretty early. So they got contri contributions from up and down the lineup. I mentioned the freshmen, but Augusto Casilla and Andre Screen also had their moments to shine. And the biggest takeaway, it's right up there with at Marquette, that row win at Marquette as the biggest win of the season. Absolutely massive for their tournament chances. So on the other side, because there's another team that played this game, the Creighton Blue Jays. Sometimes there's really not that much you can do. They put up 98 points in this game, and typically in college basketball in 40 minutes, that's enough to win. But Butler did a little bit more. So what did Creighton do? They had four guys absolutely carry them the entire way. Because what the heck is a bench? Ryan Kalkbrenner, Trey Alexander, and Baylor Shireman are the big three of Creighton. We all know that. But then there was a fourth in Stephen Ashworth that really found his shot. And they did major damage all night. All four of them went over 20 points. Kalkbrenner had 20. Alexander had 22. And Shireman and Ashworth both had 26. And I just want to talk about how awesome those guys were because they put their team on their back. And if it wasn't for little bit of shenanigans here and there they probably come away with that win Creighton scored 98 points as a team those four guys had 94 of them so this was a true carry job they don't run that deep at all and the three guards and Alexander Ashworth and Shireman played all 40 minutes of the game they never took a minute off which I just think is darn impressive having that kind of stamina to last the whole game but it may have ended up being their undoing I don't know. Another area where you got to give Creighton credit is the foul trouble. They averaged the least amount of fouls in all of college basketball, and they played a clean game. They lived up to the reputation, and on the other side, they did a great job of getting Butler into foul trouble. They got in severe foul trouble in both halves, and that's really a credit to just a size mishmash. Creighton's a really big team, and Butler had a lot of trouble dealing with that size, the foul margin was 21 fouls on Butler to Creighton's 11. And even at the end of the game when Creighton was in foul mode, that just means that difference was a little bit larger for most of the way. Creighton also ran the floor really well. A part of why their offense runs so well is they had a guard or two back before the Butler defense. Most of the time, it's something that Thad Mata harped on in game. But when you get a ba Baylor Shireman, that's just creeping in in the back and then you get a one-on-one -on -one, you get a mismatch and then you get an easy bucket but overall for Creighton it's just tough there's really not much you can do about that one Butler had that win and they took it so what does this mean going forward Butler's next game is at UConn on February 6th now that is going to be huge for them because as of right now they sit on the right side of the bubble they're in is probably a 10 seed I don't care what anybody else says I don't know what more you have to do two road wins against borderline top 10 teams that's pretty good they're in right now right now there's a lot of season left they're not trending towards John Rothstein but you add those two wins on top of their other quad one wins against Texas Tech and Boise State, and that's not a bad resume. And especially with the stretch coming up, if they could get another one, just imagine, just imagine if they go into stores and knock off UConn. But that is incredibly wishful thinking. You just got to hope that they can continue to play good, sharp basketball. And on the other side, Creighton's going to have a chance to rebound at Providence on February 7th. But that's all I got. 
for this Butler versus Creighton recap. If you want to watch more of our college basketball stuff, we have a ton of that that you can find. And coming up on the channel, if you want to watch Tim's videos, he's been making some bangers, so go check those out. And anything else you want us to talk about. But until next time, I'm out. This is so weird to do without headphones. <laughs>